This demonstration is uh, on the dissecting microscope, a microscope that you'll use in molecules, genes, and cells, and a little bit more in biology of organisms. It's called a dissecting microscope because you can do dissections under it. Uh, it doesn't magnify things very strongly, but you can certainly see details on, on uh, specimens like insects. Uh, uh, in fact, a lot of detail. And it fundamentally works by bouncing a light off the specimen through the series of lenses and into your eye, uh, different to the compound microscope which uh, passes the light through the specimen. So generally the specimens are solid, like this um, coleoptera that I've, I've got here for an example. Now setting this microscope up, I first mention how you carry them um, because they're, they're quite expensive and uh, if you drop them they, they would certainly not, not come out um, the best. Uh, you would grab it by the post and by the base and a nice firm grip to manipulate the microscope. Uh, once it's on the bench you, you try to set it up where it's convenient and then pretty much leave it where it is. Um, pushing it around the bench is not good either. So the first thing we do is plug in the power cord um, and plug in the USB for the camera and we'll be talking about the, the camera program a little bit later. Uh, the first thing I'll demonstrate is the light and the light is very important. Um, to get the light right uh, is, um, or getting the light wrong is, is often uh, one of the main mistakes students make. It's simply the on switch and the intensity dial here. But you can direct the light from two different paths from the um, uh, from uh, below the specimen and uh, and that is the the light intensity dial on the right and so you, you can work with with fairly thin and small specimens or you can direct the light from the top and that's the dial on the left now uh, one more thing about the light from the top you've got to poke your fingers down inside here and it, there's a little bank of LED lights that you can direct like a stage light onto the specimen. Now you're in control of this light you can use a little bit from the bottom and a little bit from the top or all from the bottom or all from the top. You have to fiddle with it to make make it work the best for you. The next thing um, in setting this up is to make sure that this little knob is um, pushed in. It's pulled out to send the image to the camera and then to your, um, to your computer. But uh, if you want to use it using both eyes, that knob has to be pushed in. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, the next thing that we have to do is, is because these are, um, are used with both of your eyes, you have to focus them for your eyes. Now, you might have eyes that are perfectly equal, but you can't assume that the person that used this before you had equal eyes. And, and so th this is a vital step. Uh, you put a specimen underneath. Uh, you look down through the microscope and you adjust the interocular distance or the interpapillary distance, I think it's called, until you can see the image using both eyes. Uh, then I'd sharpen the focus up. That's the focus knob on the, the, on the base of the microscope. Get the image into a nice sharp focus. You might have to move it quite a bit. Now we're going to adjust it for both of your eyes. The right eyepiece is set at zero and it's left at zero. The technicians have adjusted the focus of the camera to this lens and, and they've done that by uh, positioning this lens at zero. Then you just look down, you shut your left eye and look down through the microscope with your right eye and sharpen that focus as best you can. And then you shut your right eye and just look through the left eyepiece and instead of adjusting the focus with the main focus control, you adjust the focus with the eyepiece itself just the left eyepiece. And when that's sharp, both of your eyes are in focus with the specimen. And that's what you should do every time you approach one of these microscopes. Um, you'll often be sharing it between students. 
but you know the person next to you may not have the, the same setup. Their eyes may be not quite focused the same as yours, and so a quick refocus is, is what you should be doing every time you, you uh, approach one of these microscopes after someone else has used it. Now, the, they are quite simple. The, the last control that I want to show you is the magnification. Now, that is generally set at its lowest value, 0.67, before you start. Uh, now, what we're currently magnifying this specimen at 6.7 because the eyepiece is times 10 and because the objective lens controlled by this knob is 0 0.67, 10 times 0 0.67 is 6.7. Looking down this microscope, that little beetle is magnified 6.7 times. But you can adjust the magnification, and it's a continuum. Uh, uh, you, you know, whatever's needed, but it, it goes from 0.67 through 0.8, through 1, 1 1.2, all the way up to 4.5. So 10 times 4.5 is 45. Now I'm looking at this, this beetle at 45 times the magnification. And just readjust the focus. I can see the hairs on one of its legs, so uh, we're getting quite a bit of detail. Um, the, the next thing that we'll demonstrate is the software. Um, and for now, that's, that's the uh, dissecting microscope.